Hi, I'm Christopher, a research software engineer with Research Software Workshops, and it's a very warm welcome to Introduction to Data Analysis in our part two. So the link to the course material is at the bottom of the page here, and you are working now on the tibbles and filter section, which you can see here. And we'll be working within RStudio, which will have open something like this. Now, as you remember from the Intermediate R workshop, R is great at representing and manipulating tabular data. Now, in traditional sort of old-fashioned R, this was handled in a data dot frame, while in the modern Tidyverse R, which we'll be using, this is handled via a tibble. Now, a tibble is a two-dimensional table of data. We get it by basically loading up the Tidyverse. So what we're going to do first is we're going to create a new R notebook. So we'll do File, New R Notebook. I'm going to save this. Just remove all of the data here. There we are. And then we'll do save. And we will save this as um, tibbles.rmd. OK. Now, first thing we're going to do is we're going to load up the tidyverse. So create an R block. And then I'm just going to copy this in here. And this is going to be creating a tibble, which will contain a census. So this is basically loading up the tidyverse and then creating a, table, a tibble where effectively we have three columns, city, year and population. And then we have basically all of the cities, the years and the populations. And if we now run this, it's now run. Now this has created the tibble. Indeed, you can see it's actually loaded the tidyverse and created the tibble. And it's assigned it to the variable census. The column names are the keys, city, year and pop and the data for each column is given in the values in those lists. Now we can print the summary of the table to our tibble by going R, and then just taking in census like that. And if we then run this, you'll see here is our table, our tibble. Note that R will default to interpreting numbers as floating point numbers, so doubles. And you can see that here, DBL, DBL, that means that both of these values in the year column and the population column are double precision floating point numbers. Now, while this is correct for the pop population column, this is a wrong choice for the year column. Now, a better choice would be an integer. Now, to force this, we can use as.integer to set the data type. So here, when we load up the year, we can instead do as.integer and then force it, I'm just indenting it to make it look pretty and nice, force this list to be interpreted as a list of integers. So if I now rerun this, and then I reshow the census, you now see here we have our years are now integers. Now you can access the contents of a table, mostly we tend to access it by columns. So here I'm going to create a new R block, and we're just going to play around for a little bit. So if I want to access the city column, I would do that by doing census, square bracket, and then in double quotes, city, the name of that column. So there we are, we now have the city column. Now I can also access the um, columns by their index. So if I want the first column, which is the city column, I could do city square bracket one. That would give us the same thing. Now I can also extract multiple columns by specifying them via C. So effectively I do C, open round bracket, and if I want city and year, I'd pass in city, comma, and then year, making sure I use the same capitalization for the column names. And now you can see we've now got the city column and the year column. Now if I want to access data by rows, we need to pass in the row index followed by a comma. So I do census square bracket. If I want the first row, that is row one. And then if I do a comma and then close the square bracket, and now I run this, there we are. We now have the first column of the data. Now I can use ranges to get several rows. So I want rows one to five. I can do one colon five. There we are. Here are the first five columns of the data. And I can use the seek seq function that we came across in intermediate Python to actually give us a sequence of numbers which are not contiguous. So for example, if I do seek and then I go 2, 10, 2, that would mean give us rows 2 to 10 in steps of 2. 
Now this is rows 2, 4, 6, 8 and 10 within this table. Now you can access specific rows and specific columns by placing two values in here. So I wanted the first row and the first column, it'd be 1, 1. And there we are, we've got City Paris. If I wanted the second column, it would be 1, 2. Gives us the year. And indeed, if you wanted to have the fifth row, so the fifth row, and you wanted to have the second and third columns of the fifth row, we would do five for the fifth row, and then two colon three to do the second and third columns, as we have here. Now the above functions all return a tibble, which was a subset of the original sort of population tibble that we had. Now you can extract the data, so the actual data rather than the tibble itself, by using double square brackets or by using the dollar sign. So for example, if I did census double square brackets one, like that, this will give me the actual raw data itself. So in this case, this is the list of the values of that column. Or if I did census double square bracket city, again, that would give me the same thing. All of the raw data for the city column. Equally, I can grab the city column by doing census um, dollar sign and then city. And you can even see our studio nicely auto completes that for me. Again, we've got the raw data now for that column. And then we can extract the raw data from this particular list again by indexing. So census dollar city square bracket one is going to give us the first item in that list. So that's the raw data, which is Paris in this case. Now, we can start asking questions of our data and querying the data by using the filter function. So I'm going to create a new R Studio block here or new R Markdown block here. There we are. And what I can do is I can use sort of forward pipe to pass, I always get that wrong, to pass our census through the filter function. And what the filter function does is it will filter out rows within the tibble that match whatever the sort of the query that's within filter. So in this case, if I say the query is I want city equals Paris, what this will do is it will filter through and produce a tibble where we've matched all of the rows where the city is equal to Paris. Now note we did not have to put double quotes around city because actually the filter is clever enough to know that city refers already to the column name. Now if this symbol here, this forward pipe is sort of like unfamiliar to you, do remember that we did cover this in detail in the intermediate R workshop so please do feel free to go back and have a look at that page. Now this forward pipe sort of operation has returned a new tibble which we could then access using the same methods as we were accessing before. So if I wanted to look at the year column from this, I could do put all of this in round brackets to make sure it runs, and then square bracket year. So it's going to extract the year from the tibble that is produced by this forward pipe operation. And there we are, we've now got the year that comes out of it. It's also possible to test if the rows of a tibble match your condition which you used for the filter by typing in, by basically typing the, the condition directly. So if I do census city equals Paris, what this will output is a tibble of true false values, which you can see here. So it's basically, this is the mask which is used to select which rows are going to be given in the output tibble from the filter. Now from here, it is possible to add new columns to your, to your tibble simply by assigning them by index as you would if you're creating a new dictionary. So let's go down, let's create a new R block down here. Da, 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 da. There we are. Sometimes it takes a while to sort of get through. I use the down key to get past this because see this is quite a big space that was taken up by my R Studio. So let's create a new R block. And then what I can do is I can add a new column by just naming it. So if I say census continental, so I'm creating a new column called continental. Well, let's say this is whether or not 
the city is equal to London, because we only have, in this case, three cities, London, Paris, and Rome. We know Paris and Rome are going to be on the continent. London is not. So basically, it's continental if its city is not equal to Rome. The city is not equal to London. So we can say this is going to be equal to census city is not equal to London. And then if we print the census out after we've run this, let's have a look what we get. And there we are, we can see here, we have a new column added called continental as we placed on the left. And the values are true or false, depending on the value of this particular condition, i.e. the city value of the, the value of the city in the city column is not equal to London. So true for Paris and Rome, false for London. Okay, this has now walked you through all of this page. Please do feel free to have another read through it as well. And then at the end, we have here an exercise where you need to create a tibble containing the census data for these three cities. So copy and paste what we've got from the notes. Then I'd like you to select the data for the year 2001. And I'd like you to use R to just find out which city had the smallest population that year. Now press pause. And when you come back from pause, I will show you the answer. OK, so you've come back from pause now, so I'm going to sort of show you the answer. And in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clear everything on this page so we can do this from the beginning. So there we are. We've now got an MTR notebook, which I've called tibbles.rmd. First thing we've got to do is we've got to load up the tidyverse. So we do library tidyverse, and we can just do that in its own little block here, which we've now run. The tidyverse is loaded. The next step is to load the data. So here, load the census data. In this case, I'm going to copy and paste the census data because you don't want to watch me typing all of this out. So let's copy all of this in. OK, and that's loaded it up. And we're set. And the next thing we need to do is basically extract the data for the year 2001, which is the one we need to be looking at. So what we're going to do here is we have census filtered through year equals 2001, like that. Now if I just ran this on its own and I print it out, what you'll see is we'll get the answers. And indeed, I could just look at these three and see which one has the smallest population. Well, it was Paris. I can see this by eye. But it would be much better if we could actually do this programmatically in R. So let's imagine we had hundreds of cities, so it's not possible for us to look by eye through this. So this means the first thing we need to do is we need to grab out this population column. So we can say that population column is going to be assigned from the filtered results and then taking out the population column. And if we take a look at it and now run, you can see we've now got the three values. We now need to find the minimum population, if I can spell. And this minimum population we can get using the min function. So I could say min pop, which I'll call it that, is minimum of pop. So it's the minimum value that we get out. So we can say what is the minimum value? Let's have a look. It is 2.148, which is what we would expect. That's the population of Paris in that year. Now we can now use this minimum population to further filter the census data. So filter the census data to find this minimum population. Okay, so what we can do is we can go census. First, we push this through the filter for the year is 2001. And then we're then going to push this through another filter where the population must equal the minimum population that we've now found. If we now run this, we can see we've now extracted that Paris row that we wanted. Now, finally, obviously we only need the city from this. So let's now wrap this up in round brackets and now grab out the city column. There we have sort of the answer 
And indeed, what we can do is we can now combine all of this into one admittedly slightly dense, sort of very sort of heavy R function, where we can say city is assigned from census, pushed through, and remember we use a new line, make things look a little bit clearer, year equals 2001. And then we're going to then push that through a filter where the population is equal. And indeed, rather than using minpop, we're going to calculate this all in one line as well. It'll be the minimum of census pushed through a filter of year equals 2001, taking out the population column. And then we have two round brackets there. That's good. And then we just want the city column. And then finally, we should print that city out. So that's the dense expression, which will give you the answer of which city had the smallest population in the year 2001. OK, so that's given us the answer to the question. That means we've now finished the exercise and you're now ready to go on to part three.